All right. So connecting to your sattva. Now, let me say that I am not a professional in this. I have done my two 100 hour um, yoga training. I have done a lot of deep dive for my own wellness, for my own growth. Um, a lot of this comes from my teacher. A lot of this comes from the um, curriculum that we were required to read and then my own research. This is also once again, scraping the surface. If you want to go in a rabbit hole, feel free. There's so much information and um, it's actually really interesting. Okay. In yoga philosophy, all matter originates from the fundamental substance in the, of the universe known as prakriti. There are three primary gunas or qualities that give rise to the fundam fundamental aspects of nature energy, matter, and consciousness. Uh, the three gunas are tamas, rajas, and sattva. And as I'm showing you how that kind of fans out. So there's these three, the tamas, darkness, rajas, the activity, and the sattva is the being. Now these three gunas are constantly present in all beings um, and they fluctuate. So maintaining a balance among these gunas is crucial for your health and your prosperity and your wellness. But it's not a regular balance. It's not like an even balance. It's a flow. And some things will be higher, some things will be lower. But what we want to focus on is all three. However, sattva is what we're looking at right now. How do we live a more sattvic life? How do we bring more sattva into our life? How do we cultivate it? How do we connect with it? Some of us just really need to deeply connect. Um, so we're looking at sattva being the basic nature. We want to be clear, calm, creative, positive. And then with the rajas, it's, it's just enough. It's just enough of dynamic force. And then with the tamas, it's to shake things up and it can be, you know, um, I don't know, it can be the energy that's in motion from Rajas. Um, and it can often come with a lot of heaviness and negativity, which is part of life. None of us are always without um, negativity or, you know, ignorance or bitterness. This is where we learn. So if you're putting it into pictures and thought, we want to be tamaskly grounded to the earth so that we can rest and sleep and connect. Majestically passionate and fired up about like our work and what we do, how we show up in life. And sattvically calm and at peace to realize that our goal is freedom. It's, our goal is joy um, to be a part of our true nature. And so then the question is, are you ready to bring more sattva into your life? Aligning with your inner guide, purifying the body, the senses, and the mind leads to achieving sattva, resulting in experiencing the true self. So there are a lot of ways that um, we can live a sattvic life or connect or cultivate more sattva. Um, here's just six that I personally really connect to. And once again, you can deep dive into this and see what connects to you. Now, most of you know, I'm board certified in nutrition. So nutrition is a leading force in everything that I do and the way that I live. And so nutrition is a big part of, um, cultivating sattva and living a sattvic life. And the suggestion is eating foods that are organic um, fresh in season, um, definitely vegetarian forward, local. If food is eaten when pure, it brings inner peace to the body and encourages spiritual progress. That is a belief in yoga philosophy. Now, not everyone has access to constantly organic or fresh food. Um, and I hate that, but that is fact. And so another 
way of connecting that to your nutrition is really eating mindfully um, and navigating the systems that you're in wherever I, wherever you're at. Um, California, for example, since we are based in California, has a really great farmer's market um, access with SNAP, with our um, state food support system. And so it's kind of one of those things where you have to do due diligence and figure out if you are in a position where it is harder to buy those foods um, because financially it's a burden, then um, really research what your city or state local government um, has to offer. And you know what? It works quite well in California. So if you're somewhere where they're not doing that, use it as a blueprint. Why not be the one that helps change that? Another way to cultivate more sattva is, of course, living in harmony. Seems really simple, but once again, it's awareness. People can get really wrapped up in their own state of being. Um, if they're used to living in anxious um, and anxiety and in stress, um, people get really conditioned to that being their normal. And so it does take awareness to live in harmony. Regulate your daily events. Eat at similar times each day. Sleep regular hours. Try to have at least six to eight hours of sleep. And really, there is something in here to trying to go to sleep at the same time or close to the same time and eating around the same time. Um, not only does it help the body live in harmony, but for those that are struggling with metabolic issues or um, obesity, your body will respond to being fed um, on a schedule. It needs, it needs you for that. That's your responsibility. But you will also see, of course, living in harmony, somebody that's well-rested, somebody that regulates their events, doesn't over um, commit, um, understands their healthy boundaries and how to say no to things when they really can't be there. They're definitely taking care of themselves and designing a life that has more harmony in it. And then movement. Exercise with awareness, moving the body through postures, stillness, awareness. In yoga, this can be a incredibly powerful way to boost your sattva. Now, yoga is not for everyone. I get it. Understand. So what does your movement look like for your body? I know dance is a big one. Dance is a big one with me too. But I've also seen where I've taken dance too far, where it has hurt my body, where it has worn down my body. So with all the things that we love, there is a point, a tipping point. And so really trying to be aware about the exercises that you're bringing into your life and having multiple modalities of exercise and movement will be key to a more sattvic life. Um, if you are not on mute, please mute yourself. Thank you. I can't see everyone right now. And then mindfulness. Being aware of your current emotions, feelings, and states to learn from each moment. Embrace the information available to understand yourself better, to promote calmness, presence, and your sattva. Okay. Embrace the e information available. Look, there are always parts of ourselves that we need to grow and develop and build or maybe even change. And so if you constantly are finding yourself in a position and you're like, you know, always have a problem with someone, always having an issue, look at the common denominator in that situation. It's probably you and you're mirroring to people something that you're unhappy with about yourself. This is just my point of view. I say this with love because we all have these things. And when we react, when we really examine how we present in situations, how we show our emotions, um, 
or maybe how we don't show them and hold them in and bottle them in and it bubbles up. This is all information that you embrace about yourself. Don't hate on yourself. You're human. This is a part of your human journey. And so when you're given that information, you examine it to see what you can change and how you can create a better life for yourself. And that is mindfulness. In my opinion, that is mindfulness. You're not meant to be perfect. You're not meant to be without flaws. You're a real human on a real human journey. And I know for me, the goal is to learn as much as I can in this life and to correct and unlearn and relearn and, you know, cultivate that sattva. And so don't be ashamed of the things that pop up about yourself that you might not be so proud of or ashamed of. It's information. It's information, just like any problem that you solve. And so you work towards changing that. And that's through your mindfulness. All right. And then we have our dear mother, all of our mothers, mother nature. Spending time in nature boosts your happy hormones. It induces calmness. It provides a sense of renewal. Activities like being near water, dare I say in water, because I could be in water all the time, or hiking will elevate your sattva. All right. You're like, Mel, I live in the middle of nowhere. You have trees. You have a park. Go be with those trees. Go be with that park. And then plan one hell of a vacation at the water or the mountains. <laughs> um, boost your sattva then. But um I think a lot of you probably, you know, read different medical journals or health magazines, or you're even on social media. And um, the social media trend that I am loving is the trend around walking. And it seems so simple, but walking, the, the science, the, the, just the science alone around what walking 30 minutes a day can do for your body, especially those of us that are, um, well, 40 over 50 over, it is essential to move your body and even down to the walking pads. Now I'm like, I'd rather you be outside, but when the weather's really rough, walking pads are a really great investment. You put them at your desk, you get in 10,000 steps, boom. I mean, it does not replace mother nature, but the movement of the body, and that goes back to exercise, right? That is a mindful exercise. Sitting at your desk for eight hours or combining that with a walking pad and walking as you're typing or whatever. I mean, like that's a very, that's mindfulness. That's awareness in your exercise. But once again, it will never, ever replace being connected to Mother Nature. And, you know, we're in our fertility season here um, and the rain comes and goes when it wants. And I find those moments where I can get outside for 10 minutes and maybe I'm not going to walk far from the house, but I, you know, get some uh, pruning shears and I go and I prune a rose bush and I put myself outside. I touch nature. I smell it. Um, I don't have my phone. I don't put music on. I don't put earbuds on. I'm absorbing and bringing in and receiving everything. And that elevates your sattva. And then meditation or prayer, um, starting and ending your day with meditation or prayer taking a few moments each day to center yourself can greatly impact your overall well-being. You do not have to be religious to sit with yourself for a moment and set an intention for the day. You call it whatever you want to call it, but it is proven to create a balance and a calmness in the body. Um, and if you can do that practice every day and every night, um, I guarantee that you will not only see a change, but you'll definitely be in more alignment with cultivating your sattva. Now, as I said, we can go on and on and on with the um, professionals in this world that, you know, fully like train on sattva, train on the rajas um, or the gunas. Um, I will say we do have a class later this week with Chantal, who is a certified licensed Ayurvedic um, practitioner. And I highly suggest that you attend that. 
um, you will get a lot of detailed information, which will help you definitely cult more sattva, cultivate more sattva. All right. Um, I'm going to keep going. These last two, your home and your office. The purity and tranquility of your surroundings are believed to impact the tranquility and clarity of the mind. Therefore, ensure your living space is clean, fragrant, and free of clutter. And so there is something to say about spring cleaning, but spring cleaning should happen like multiple times a year. <laughs> and that desk, the desk, what does your desk look like? I know I see some heads shaking. The desk, I am so guilty of this to where I have put in my calendar every two weeks to go through and um, wipe down the desk, um, throw away whatever needs to be thrown away, refile. And it's just something I've had to schedule as like part of my job. And I know when I do it, everything flows more freely. I feel less stressed. But once again, it's about that not being perfect thing. It's about the unlearning and relearning. And sometimes we have to treat things like they're a job. I do it. I know I feel better. But yet at the end of the week, I'm like, who's been at my desk? Why does it look like this? And it's just me. So it's something I'm working on. And I know that's probably heading home for a lot of you. Clean that desk out. Down into the drawers. Clean the, you know, get get a Swiffer and clean out the drawers. Um, but, you know, I think there's definitely with folks that understand like chronic depression um, or have cared for people a lot of times. And I say this with love because our son will deal with it. And his room I could always know what his mind and his heart was feeling like by why how his room looked and when we get him to clean the room and believe me it wasn't easy his whole personality changed and so you are what your environment is so that one's a really easy for me it feels like a really easy thing to cultivate more sattva and then state of mind I mean, <laughs> to enhance our mental state, we focus on nurturing, you know, say nurturing peace, calmness, nurturing calmness. This is all about nurturing. I don't even want to use the word create. It's nurturing. That peace is within you. It just needs to be nurtured. That calmness is within you. It just needs to be nurtured. You don't have to create it. Nurture it humility oh that one i could not take that one out humility nurture your humility nurture your flexibility you know what do you say to yourself what do you say in your head how do you talk to yourself what do you how do you address yourself when you look at yourself in the mirror all these things are part of your state of mind and so it ties back in your movement, meditation, journaling, spending time in nature. This will help you cultivate a more sattvic mindset. All right, friends, journal time. <clears throat> Where are the opportunities currently in your life that you could cultivate where you could cultivate more sattva or cultivate your sattva? The other question is, what is one commitment you can make today that will create more sattva? Now I get to play devil's advocate. What accountability might you need to meet this goal? What are the roadblocks that could get in the way and what accountability might you need? Oh, and there's, see, see, here's the imperfectness right now. It's driving me crazy. There's a, a uh, spelling error here. So I'm going to love myself through that because it's easy for me to beat myself up. How could living a more sattvic life help you? Um, how could living a sat more sattvic life help you? I take a few moments to write about these. Um, nobody's reading your writing, so it can be scribble, scrabble. It can be little bullet points. But, you know, I think it's a great idea to write with a little bit of clarity so you can look back on it. So 
what are the opportunities currently in your life to cultivate your sattva? What is one commitment you can make today? What accountability might you need? And then what does it look like when you're living a more sattvic life? Visualize that. Whether you're writing or typing, take about three more minutes. I'm really proud of myself. I fed the birds so much so they would like be quiet for this class. I worry they're all asleep somewhere though. <laughs> fed them so much. <laughs> I love this. I see I see thinking minds happening. I'll just share mine verbally while y'all are writing. So opportunities, um, I, because I've been so deep dived into this lately, my opportunities are my schedule. And so this weekend I spent, well, not even this weekend, last week through this weekend, I spent a lot of time writing down on a whiteboard what my schedule, what a healthy schedule would look like for me right now, um, to achieve the different things that I want to achieve, um, and to have more balance. I have full ownership of that. Also to release to release constant worry about my son and honor his journey because the worrying is not healthy for me. The commitment that I made to myself, which is my name my commitment last week was to um sort out my schedule and I'm, I'm doing that I'm doing that so I'm proud accountability that I would need to meet the goal the accountability with my son is that um I've kind of thought of like a keyword that I say to myself a phrase a really small phrase when I am starting to maybe future trip or worry about him and that uh, my aunt my wife is also offering support for me um so I can just Try to unlearn that. And then for me, how does living, how could that look living? Um, I think it makes my time with my son more genuine, more present. Um, and then balancing my schedule. Uh, I've already seen the health benefits. So, you know, once again, it's that information that I received. And I've got to do something with it. So I know that it will lead to a healthier, like, physical, healthier life for me. And now not to put anybody on the spot, but <laughs> does anybody want to share any of their um, answers? And I asked this, one thing I'm nosy, two thing, um, because when we put it out there, it's out there and we've stated it and we've put it into action. So would anybody want to share what they've written? If so, take yourself um, off of, Ooh, take yourself off of mute. All right. Okay. Y'all gonna be shy today. That's okay. Okay, okay. I I, I can share. <laughs> I I just want to make sure that I don't fill in all the holes in my calendar and leave one evening a week blank. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So I can have more time to myself and think things through and catch up with things that I haven't finished. Okay. Yeah. 
that that night, the date night with yourself, that's important, right? So what might get in the way of that? What kind of accountability do you need? I think when people ask me, it's really hard to resist. I think I just have to say, I can't, I think. Okay, so there's- I, I, I'm going to try. I don't know if I can do it. That's all that we can do. So maybe the suggestion to you is the same thing like I have with myself is I have that little, it's kind of my why statement. And so maybe the why statement, it's the why statement is for me. I say it internally to remind myself of why I'm doing the thing that I'm doing. And so maybe yours, maybe you create a why statement that you can say in your mind as you graciously um, say, I can't do that, or I'm not available, or just a simple no. Yeah, because I want to live longer. <laughs> I, I mean, be more relaxed. <laughs> exactly. It all comes to <laughs> that, like, we need that time with ourselves, and it's important. It's important. You get to, time is currency, and we only have so much time in this life, so... Thank you for sharing that. Is anybody else feeling up to the? Yeah, I can share. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name's Tracy. Um, I just spent four days um, up California coast one in the Redwoods. Mm -hmm. So I was forced bathing, no technology because no cell service, um, a lot of rest. So now I think the challenge is I, I'm in the San Jose area, so it's very busy and loud. How do I find those opportunities to be in nature? Uh, and it might be something as simple as getting up a little earlier on a weekend and going to the Santa Cruz Mountains. Um, it might even be going to the Rose Garden in San Jose because there are redwood trees there. I'm very connected to redwood trees. And so the accountability in my mind would just be putting it on my calendar as a dedicated time and not um, deciding to sleep in instead. And then um, how could loving, how will it help me? I'll just be uh, kinder and more thoughtful and probably nicer to be around. I do. And that's, yes, uh, I could feel, I could smell it as you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> medicine right so you know that that's some of your medicine like we don't all have the same medicine right yeah. that is part of your medicine and you know if you had something that you had to take medicine for daily you'd do it right you wouldn't even think about it you'd say okay okay I gotta take this because it's going to improve my life correct my disease save my life this is your medicine and so find a way that you make sure that you take your medicine and who's to say you know what i i'm i've taken some lovely naps in the redwood forest so pack up that little bag and get out there do your walk and then take a little nap love it thank you for sharing that is anybody else up for sharing going i i oh. can if you um I need to, um, even if it's like a five minute meditation in the morning, um, just get grounded first off. Um, I'm going to just schedule it or just throw it in there. Um, and then at least once during the day or in the evening at bedtime. Yeah. So. The kookaburro grease too. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so loud so I heard the the um grounding meditation so mm -hmm. what if you said this I couldn't hear it what could get in the way of you doing this what accountability do you need um I definitely just kind of need to schedule it in there it's I just realized I've been so hectic and then now I'm like I haven't meditated in like two weeks or three weeks <laughs> It's started three days ago and I'm just going to keep doing. <laughs> right. And so once again, there's that thing that you learned about yourself. When I meditate, things are a little bit easier. Life is still. Yes. Life, right. 
Mm -hmm. Life is still going to lie. Some days you're going to get a shit pie and you got to, that's what you got, (laughs) right? Yeah. (laughs) uh, Provide care for yourself. Five minutes in the morning. Maybe it's five minutes at lunch. Maybe it's five minutes at the end of the night. That's 15 minutes out of an entire day. But the payoff could be so much more calm and joy and balance, Mm -hmm. understanding and grace. Yeah, absolutely. I I think it goes for everyone. And I think that another thing that we can see through all this is that (laughs) there it is that I just need to schedule it. We're all in this position of life where, I mean, and if that's what it takes and that's what it takes, right? If that's what it gets done, then that's what gets done. Treat it like part of your job. It's your medicine. Take your medicine. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate everyone sharing. Um, Does anybody else want to share and put it out there before we move on? All right. Thank you for that. So before we move into sound and breath, I want to give you a little connection here. Sattva and the sixth chakra. So the third eye the insight system or intuition, the location, obviously cranial, the quality of the sixth chakra is sattvic. It's it's light, it's wisdom, it's purity. It's that inner knowing. It's that seeing and understanding of the unseen. The element is intelligence. The sense is the mind. The colors associated, blue, purple, indigo, Um, and also people will often, um, connect like bright white, although in my training, bright white is more connected to crown. Um, there's been studies around sound, the frequency that's connected to the sixth chakra, connecting the color and then adding in the layer of the ohm, um, to really open and receive in that system and that chakra and that in that area and so maybe because you're in your home and you're safe maybe when we're in sound you add some ohms in there play with that see how it feels and there's no wrong way to do it you know clear out the breath clear it out once bring the breath in and then let it go let it go out for as long as you need maybe play with that while we're doing this and for those that know that have worked with me in other areas because nutrition is so important food so you think purple blue indigo foods so blueberries eggplant those are some of my favorites blue spirulina i love to have your little blue spirulina in my smoothies or make energy balls with them so you can play with that sixth chakra that sattvic chakra um, with your food as well all right we're going to switch into getting really comfortable i want you to find a position i want you to pretend you're in this room with me and lie down get comfortable cover up Um, If you want to put an eye mask on, put an eye mask on. If you're going to do um, earbuds or headset, now's the time to put it on. Um, There's nothing that you need to see that I'm doing. I want you just to receive. This is a moment for you to receive. And as you're getting comfy, I want you to think about what is your intention for this session? Now, maybe. Before you came here, you were like, my intention for today is blah, 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 blah. If that is your intention, stick with it. If through our discussion around sattva or your journal prompts, something else has shown up, create an intention now. And then for some of us, it may be, I just want to receive, receive whatever I receive. That is okay too. Let me give you a moment to sit down. 
and I'm going to move back to my bowls and I'm going to take this spotlight off. So I'll stop share. Oh, okay. I did not have, I did not have the music suppression on. So you couldn't hear the kookaburros fighting for so that's 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 why nobody was reacting <laughs> okay um all right we should all be good to go i should have did a sound check with my bowl before i had you lay down but it's okay i'll be able to see my screen if for any reason something is not working all right my loves I want to take a little journey with you. I want to take a journey in through your mind's eye. And I want you first to feel how the body feels against whatever you're lying on. Maybe it's a mat, maybe it's a bed or a couch. A lot of you are ending your day. And so I want you to feel how it feels to relax. For the body to not have any pressure. Feel how the body drops into a deeper state of calm with every exhale of your breath. And then taking some inventory of the body, starting at the top of the head, I want you to start to work down your body and kind of just check, check in. How's the brain feeling? How are the jaws feeling? Is the face relaxed? On your next exhale, could you relax your face a little bit more? Maybe that's letting the mouth open a little bit. How are your ears feeling? Moving down to the throat. Has the throat been feeling good? Have you been feeling like you could speak easily? And communicate clearly. And moving into the shoulders. Can the shoulders relax anymore? Maybe if you tilt your left ear a little bit towards your left shoulder, how's the tightness along the right side of the neck into the shoulder? Maybe you notice that and take a couple of breaths into it. And then maybe you move the right ear towards the right shoulder and notice how it feels along the left side of the neck into the left shoulder. Is there one side that's tighter than the other? Is there any pain or tension? Maybe you breathe into those areas and on each exhale, Really put intention to letting the shoulders release. And if you're lying down as the shoulders release and you drop deeper into the mat or the floor or the bed that you're lying on, the chest then opens up a little bit more. We move into the chest. How is that heart feeling today? How does the chest feel? Is there tightness? Does it feel constricted? Does the heart feel like it's open and receiving? Is there anything that needs to move through? Is there some grief that's been lingering around, holding up, taking up more space than it should? 
and we know that grief is unexpressed love so we connect to that grief and give it love we honor that grief And if we start to feel emotional, we allow the heart to open. We allow things to move through us, out of us, so we can receive. And we look at how the ribs are feeling. When we breathe, do we have an expansion of the ribs? Front, back, side to side. And when we expand the ribs, the chest rises and there we are really in that open receiving state and when the chest rises the shoulders release more deeper 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 into the floor the mat now we move down into the belly how's that tummy feeling do we feel like we're digesting well do we have any pains are we maybe not eating in a sattvic mindful way? Are we maybe eating some things we know upsets us, but our taste buds sure do like it, but now we're paying the price in our belly? Do we feel that there's movement through the intestines? That there's fluidity, there's a flow happening? And we notice the belly. Whenever we breathe, does our breath start at the bottom of the belly? Does the belly expand and rise like a balloon, filling full of air, expanding up into the ribs, allowing the ribs to expand front and back, side to side, filling up into the chest, into the top of the throat before we exhale out. And when we exhale, we release the throat, the chest, the ribs and we fully flatten back down and fully empty the belly and then we start that breath process again and now we're really rolling in that deep rolling wave breath you imagine that big belly fill ribs expand chest fills up to the throat release the throat the chest shuts back down the ribs release the stomach empties we continue with our inventory how are our hips feeling do they feel stagnant is our lower back achy are we feeling tightness in the hips the hip flexors is there pressure on the lower parts of the spine are we maybe not sitting in a state that's allowing the energy to flow, the chi to flow? Maybe we need to think about more walking during the day, more yoga, more stretch. Maybe we are saving up for one of those walking mats at our desk so we're not sitting there compressed the whole time. Or maybe we're really having a hard time with taking up space. Maybe we're having a hard time not being in our power when we're in our power and we're nice and tall and we stand tall we elongate the spine there's power in the belly the belly supports the lower back we walk taller there's a bigger presence about us it's not egotistical it's just us in our truest most powerful form and with that open heart not only are we here to express love, we're here to receive it. We roll down from the hips into the legs. How are the legs feeling? Are they tired, fatigued? Those knees need some love. Maybe we flex and point the feet. Flex and point, get a little blood in there through the feet and the legs. Then we're going to come back into our hands. How are the arms feeling? How are the wrists feeling? And 
and we close and we open our hands. And maybe we're going to leave our palms up to receive. And now we've done our full inventory of our bodies. And you're all going to have different information that was presented to you because you're all very different, unique, beautiful human beings on a very human journey. So what do you need more of today? With this inventory, do you now feel like your intention needs to change? Or do you want to add to it? These are all things that you get to decide. And now we're in this beautiful receiving state. Open, centered, calling in this calm, nurturing the calm, nurturing the balance.
feel, recognize the softness in your body or the release in your body, giving thanks for it, continuing in that slow wave-like breath.
taking just a moment to take a mental snapshot of this feeling, the state of being, the state of receiving. Taking a snapshot so you know that this is available to you at any point in time that you need. You're not meant to be perfect. You're not meant to figure everything out. You're not meant to correct every quote unquote wrong thing with you. You're meant to live and experience a whole human experience. Whatever information you might have received about yourself today, use it simply as that as information. So you can cultivate and nurture the parts of you that need nurturing. It's all available to you. You don't have to create it from scratch. You just have to come back to remembering. Taking a moment to come back into your body, back into your space. Feel how the body feels. Moving with intention, not rushing. Trying to keep that softness in the body. And maybe you're going to decide that you want to just lay there for the rest of the evening, or maybe you're not ready to move and that's okay too. I want you to keep in mind some of the things that we talked about today remembering that it is a very surface level look at cultivating sattva that there is so much that can be done with this and there's so much to learn um, and it's not just about the sattva right it's the three gunas it's the go back it's the three gunas the makeup of our life and how we keep those things in a balance and balance for each one of us is going to look very different because our beliefs, our ethics, our morals are all very different. And so it's really learning more about yourself. And then there's me. <clears throat> if you want more, if you want to get access or know what's going on with me, you can follow me on social at the alchemy bee. Um, you can also email me at my website, which is thealchemybee.com um, and get on a contact list for upcoming events and classes. Um, I'm getting back into the practice of offering pop-up mini sound just to really help people regulate their nervous system. So one way that you get to do that is by following me. And I've been doing that on my personal page, but I'm going back to my business page where I will offer those things. So if you want to learn more, do more, or learn about things that I'm a part of, like Banyan, um, you can follow me there. If anybody has any questions, I can stay on for just a couple more minutes. Um, if not, I hope that you will sign up for other upcoming classes for Wellness Week. We have a lot of fun classes this week, really created around this whole idea of sattva cultivating it, bringing more in. And now that you know a little bit more about what it is, what can go wrong? It can only be good. Can you see my bowls? You sure can. They are, here's my gong. And then from this side, the red one, they're um, frequencies of the seven systems. One, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, seven. Um, so root is the red, sacral or flow is the orange, solar plexus is the yellow, the heart is the green, the um, light blue turquoise is thorough, truth, um, intuition is the indigo, and then spirit is the lilac. The gong, if you can see, the gong has the seven systems, so there's a frequency level in, of each one in that gong. Um, and then the new kid on the block is this, um, I don't know if the engraving will come up, 
that there's a phoenix, there's a holy trinity, very thin, and she came from France. And when she's over you, it actually just, there's so much vibration, it creates wind on your face. And this is to the eighth chakra, um, which is above you, protecting you, always around you. And then I have a couple of metal bowls and I've got chimes. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other questions? Relaxing and refreshing, good. That's what we wanted for you. That's what we wanted for you. And I realized there was a whole Kookaburra fight happening and I couldn't see, I didn't see anybody responding um, because I didn't have, I didn't have it on, but like I was having a hard time hearing. So it's probably for the best. Um, but yeah, they decided to fight like for the tree right there. Neither one of them wants the tree. They just like to fight. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope that you guys will attend other classes during the week um, and just really keep digging into this. So there's going to be some really good nutrition classes, lots of good yoga coming your way. You get to do this all in the comfort of your home. And so there's, there's no excuse, no excuse. Um, there will be a replay. It will go up on our YouTube page um, probably later. Well, I say this afternoon. For me, it's this afternoon. But um, the replays will be up. Um, Jenny, expect them within 24 hours. And so on our Banyan YouTube page, there are so many classes. There's also recorded guided meditations, which um, everybody's really taking advantage of. And those are a good way. So Cassandra, wanting to do a five-minute meditation in the morning, I believe there's a shower meditation in there. So pop it on, listen to it, get clean. You know, sometimes we have to multitask with these things. Now, I would love for all of you to meditate completely still and like centered, but life is life. Once again, we're not meant to be perfect or meant to experience this whole human experience. So if you have any questions, reach out to me, thealchemyb.com. Um, you can go to contact on the page. And um, thanks for sharing space with me today. Uh, do we still have a survey? Yes. Yeah, as soon as I as soon as I exit out, remember that survey is going to pop up. So I okay. can die before it comes up. So it's okay. going to come up. All right. Everyone take care. Fill out the survey.